Well, you used to be able to buy Chinese AK-47s to your heart's content in the United States for years. I mean, I bought about, I don't know, 25 or 30 of them. And so, you know, I don't find that significant. Um, they might have bought Chinese arms from a Hungarian arms dealer. I mean, it, 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 there's nothing there that means anything. In fact, those, I, I, those AKs are still in Cosmoline. <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm trying to find this next question. Let me go to another question here. It's a question from Thursday or went Tuesday, so that's why I'm having a difficult time finding it. Uh, next question is, Come on, Melody. Um, does Wall Street control Obama? His administration is made up of Wall Street crooks. The answer is yes. And if you look at his campaign contribution, it starts with AIG, Goldman Sachs. I had a list in the International Forecaster one or two issues back. I, I can't keep track of it all. But anyway, the answer is yes. And he's controlled by the Illuminists, just like George Bush. And it's as simple as that. And your government isn't going to do anything to help you. Your Congress is sold out. Your court system uh, is totally controlled. You don't stand a ghost of a chance. The only, the only chance you've got is when there's 35% unemployment and there's riots going on and the, the government might get overthrown. The only chance you've got. Okay, the question is, uh, this was from Brad, could it be that the hidden agenda for a new world reserve currency is to allow the new members access to credit for their citizens, thus replacing the U.S. consumer? The new participants of the world reserve currency would enjoy the benefits the U.S. has, allowing them to export inflation to the non-members. All right, stop there. Um, first of all, they're not going to give credit to people who can't pay it back once they've got a new currency. It just isn't going to happen. And they're going to keep third world nations enslaved. It's as simple as that. You know, they want to get rid of them anyway. I mean, the estimates have been between 50 and 90 percent extermination. That's true. They want to get rid of somewhere between 50 and 90 percent of the world population. There's too many people. And, of course, they're going to be here, and, and uh, they're going to get rid of lots of people, and they'll do that through having wars. All right, go ahead, read on one more segment, and then we'll come back to it on uh, Friday. And, uh, well, that was exporting inflation to the non-members, a, a race to print up credit and beggar by other reserve members, make easy credit for their citizens and move this liability to non-other members, promote regional consumption in the last fling for the ultimate crack-up boom? I don't know. But that would pretty much, I, I mean, your comment pretty much answers all of those. Yeah, uh, you know, beyond yeah. that. Yeah. We know where they're going, what they're trying to do. All right. And um, they, they are very, very convinced that it's going to happen. When the, and I got news for them. Uh, you know, they're not going to be able to control the militaries of the world. I mean, then, you know, they're not going to shoot their own people. I mean, the Greek government right now is on the verge of collapse financially. You wouldn't think so with all the smoke and mirrors that the Greeks are throwing out there. But they're in serious trouble, even worse than Ireland. And uh, if they had rioting, I don't think for one second one Greek military man would shoot into a crowd of his own people. I just don't think they'd do that. Maybe some would, but not very many. And, you know, you start doing that, and the guy next to you says, what are you doing? You know, you just shot my uncle. Bang, you're dead. So, you know, there's two sides of this thing. Do you think the rush to reopen Cuba will help our ailing auto industry? The rush to what? Cuba. To open Cuba? No. To reopen Cuba? Uh, you know, look, if you've been to Cuba, 
Uh, what are they going to use to buy automobiles? They don't have a balance of paid uh, payment surplus. <coughs> well, you know, maybe they can help five or ten years from now. In fact, knowing the transnational corporations, if it was opened up, they'd start building factories there. Yeah. It's a nice country. And um, uh, the infrastructure is decent. Uh, it just has to be updated. And nice people. Uh, they don't deserve what they got. But um, I know I know lots about Cuba. When the government is buying into the stock market, how much do you estimate that they are spending daily? And how are they accounting for this money if they are at all? They don't have to account for it. And what are they spending? It, it's got to be uh, somewhere in the vicinity of a minimum between the Fed and the uh, Treasury Exchange Stabilization Fund. And I'm, I'm figuring they'll use 8 to 1 ratio. So they, they could be spending as much as $8 trillion a day rigging markets. It's unbelievable. And the American public doesn't know this. Wall Street doesn't know it, <coughs> unless you're an elitist. We know that the Illuminists want to implement a one-world government. Can you explain why a one-world government is not in our interest? The arguments for a one-world government include no more wars, no foreign exchange problems, no borders, no poverty-stricken countries. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Utopian. Yeah. Just like 1984 at the beginning. See, you know, all Orwell wrote this book in the late 40s, I believe, or was it the 30s? No, I think it was the 30s he wrote it. They had to be planning this thing then. I mean, how could he have known otherwise? And he was within the inner circle for a long time. So he knew what they were going to do, and he wrote about it. And they didn't care one bit, because they're going to do it anyway. They sort of laughed at Orwell and watched him collect his checks for writing the book. And I think we are out of time. I well, maybe we can get this one on. CNBC Worldwide Exchange uh, this morning, the Chinese state of China's favor for IMF special drawing rights being the standard to which all currency values are determined. So the sole question to you is, are the Chinese, if the Chinese were not suckered into buying, uh, we're out of time. We're going to have to get to this one on Friday. My apologies. It's too late. You have a question, and then he has a follow-up question. So. Folks, you're just going to have to come back on Friday, and we'll go over it. Send us your questions. I can get them printed out for uh, Friday's program. And um, it will be good Friday, so I guess we are going to do a program, are we not, Bob? I think so. I, it's yeah. fine. Okay. So uh, I haven't had anybody cancel anything. Okay. So are the markets open Friday? No. They're, they're short, aren't they? Yeah, so what you... No, they're not open at all, I don't They're not open at all? Well, we'll be here between... But anyway, what you should do is send questions in between now and Friday for Melody. We'll have a program. Absolutely. Until then, be safe. Have a great week. Or have a great week. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.